This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Thank you to our sponsors, Wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and GetFlywheel.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Well, I've been away for a little bit. Um, I, as you guys that uh, follow along with what I do, I'm a broadcast uh, engineer, and I mostly work on uh, the big uh, tractor trailers uh, that do uh, live sporting events. So uh, earlier this month in uh, April, I found myself at the Masters Golf Tournament in Augusta, Georgia, one of the uh, the most prestigious golf tournaments in the uh, in the world, and on the uh, the PGA Tour. Um, and I was surrounded by lots of uh, tractor trailers, about 20 of them uh, involved in and miles and miles and miles of uh, uh, cable and about 75 cameras used uh, for the Masters. Here's a little uh, trip I took through the, uh, through the, the TV compound, as you can see here. Um, this is an interesting way that I actually shot this too. I uh, used a 360 degree camera called a uh, Theta by uh, Rico. Uh, here it is here, and um, see it's got two lenses on it, and it allows you to take uh, full uh, 360 uh, video and stills. It, anybody can scroll around uh, on any uh, web browser on your tablet or computer. Um, one of the things I, I do plan on doing with that is eventually figuring out how to mount it to my Phantom here, so um, you know to get some really interesting perspectives. Um, but anyway, uh, there's that. Uh, also, uh, after I got done with the Masters, uh, one of the things my TV truck does is uh, we're one of the ones that cover the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. So I've been back and forth to uh, different cities. Uh, I went to Tampa and I'll be going who knows where in the coming weeks. But uh, I'm glad to be back for a little bit of a spell and I can finally get uh, an episode, a uh, new episode out for you. Uh, so I'm sorry for all those delays. Uh, also, I... I um, uh, was going to do a a full um, a, a full demo of uh, how I upgraded to my Phantom uh, 1.5 here, uh, but that's also been a little bit delayed. It's going to take a little more editing than I thought it would, uh, so that'll come in the in the, in the coming weeks. So now uh, let's get started with uh, today's show. What I have, and as always, I talk about the FAA. Um, well, in the FAA front right now, one of the things they are doing while they're still waiting for the, um, you know, they're finishing up the public comment uh, on their uh, new proposed rules. Uh, and I'm just about ready to uh, submit those. And uh, they end on April 24th, so I'm just getting in under the wire. But uh, I'll also provide a, a, a link to that on, uh, on the, my Medium account. Um, basically, what uh, I'm going to tell them is uh, two things. One is about allowing for autonomous use of drones, which the new rules will not allow. Um, they may be uh, they may be kind of uh, heading that way anyway, because they have since granted uh, Amazon permission to do experiments with their uh, delivery drones. So maybe that will get worked out after all. The other thing I have is one of their rules that they. Uh, they propose is that, um, and they just simply say it this way, no flying over people. Well, one of my questions is define over people. And I'm, I'm kind of serious about that. Um, say it's like uh, one of the things I, I like to do in my town is I, uh, I cover, we have this like large outdoor car show that uh, closes the streets of, of uh, Doylestown. And last year, I, uh, I, I flew uh, above it and off to the side to get uh, shots of, of all the crowds. Um, their rule, don't fly over people not involved. Well, does that just mean directly overhead? Or can I be, say, off to an angle and shoot uh, sideways? Like, say, shoot over, uh, uh, be actually hovering over the building tops or over trees looking uh, sideways at a crowd of people. Can I do that? It doesn't really say specifically what they mean by over people. So I'm hoping that they'll kind of clarify the rules because that could mean the difference between um, even being able to do photography of like large outdoor events. If you can't fly anywhere near the people, 
uh, that's going to really limit things. But if you can say be uh, behind the crowd or beside the crowd, that can make all the difference. So we'll see what the FAA has to say about that. Um, one of the things that they are uh, doing is that they are, while they still have to work with granting Section 333 exemptions, uh, they are really speeding up the process. Uh, they are granting them at lightning speed now to people. Uh, I still haven't uh, determined if you still need the ridiculous requirement of a full pilot's license. Uh, however, they are now offering blanket approval for any flight anywhere in the United States. If they have granted you a Section 333, you, uh, before you would have to tell them a specific use and exactly your flight times and what exactly you're going to do with it. Uh, and you know that was very limiting. Now, uh, if you are approved for a Section 333, uh, you have blanket approval to fly uh, upwards of 200 feet uh, during daylight hours only. Uh, but basically, right now, I guess whatever you want. Um, you don't have to basically uh, let them know exactly where and what you're doing. Uh, and again, if you're working uh, near an airport, you're supposed to talk to the airport and work with them. But that's a uh, big news. That's going to make things kind of come a little more fast and furious. It means that um, there'll be a lot more real estate photographers that hopefully will be getting uh, permission. And uh, a lot of other uh, people that are want to experiment would say um, for uh, crop uh, inspection. Uh, they'll be able to do stuff like that now, upwards of only 200 feet. But that's better than what it is now, which is... Uh, um, waiting a long time for them to do maybe a couple dozen um, exemptions. Uh, now it's kind of moving fast and furious, which is, is very good. So that's a lot of good news. Um, uh, another thing that's uh, good news here is, uh, if you remember my last show, I talked about two instances where um, FAA agents, local uh, office agents, um, basically um, kind of intimidated people that had drone videos up on YouTube, telling them, um, take them down or take down your website promoting your services. Um, and I mentioned that it's, it's kind of a gray area to do that. Um, well, it turns out the FAA has admitted that, uh, yes, they really have no legal right to ask people to do that. And they've gone so far as to uh, come up with a new uh, policy agreements that they're um, enforcement agents have to follow, which uh, basically forbids them from uh, trying to pressure people to remove videos from YouTube or whatever site, uh, because really they can't. Um, one of the things that it's, it says here, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, one of their tactics was going against our realtors, and here's what it says here. Nevertheless, the unsanctioned enforcement campaign succeeded in intimidating Caldwell Banker and other realtors to not use drone videos. The campaign raised questions about whether watching YouTube was a good use of a safety inspector's time. Remember that thing that I said about they are only to enforce safety. That's it. Um, and it's kind of akin, as it says here, kind of akin to telling a bookstore or Amazon to stop selling a book that features drone aerial images. It would be a clear First Amendment violation. And um, fortunately, the FAA has admitted that, um, yeah, we really probably shouldn't be doing that. So that's very good news. Uh, that's good news. We, we don't have to panic that we have to remove our videos from YouTube or risk the FAA. Um, threatening us with uh, legal action for shooting a, a drone video. So it is protected under the First Amendment and free speech and uh, it, it kind of brings back to the kind of brings around the whole point that the limited enforcement capabilities that the FAA really has. Again, they're only to be their 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 sole purpose is for um, safety, 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 safety and telling people that they can't do a commercial, it's really not in their function to do. So that's, that's uh, pretty, good, uh, pretty good news. So that's all I have about the FAA, but um, let's talk about uh, something that's kind of close to my uh, heart is uh, broadcasting. Um, uh, the National Association of Broadcasters hold an annual convention every April in Las Vegas. And this is kind of like the consumer electronics show for broadcasters. Uh, this is where all the vendors come out with all their new technology of where things are headed and all sorts of like seminars and, and 
uh, things for all aspects of the broadcast world, everywhere from, uh, say, a local community TV station or a radio station, um, all the way up to those producing for Hollywood uh, to come out to the National Association of Broadcasters meeting. Uh, this year, uh, unlike, uh, f was one of the first years that it was like this, drones were a very, very big part of uh, NAB. They even had their own pavilion, uh, where the, um, uh, their own pavilion where manufacturers can showcase their products and their applications to the broadcast world. Uh, I did a search on, now that NAB has concluded, I did a search uh, just for the word drones. And as you see here, the example I have on the page, there's pages and pages of uh, booths, pavilions, demonstrations, um, and even like seminars on like the legalities and the use of drones in the broadcast world. Um, you can see it took a very, very big front stage presence at NAB um, versus a year ago when you hardly heard about them. So it's amazing how quickly things are moving in this uh, technology front. Uh, I can't wait to see what next year is going to be like, and especially once the new rule set is out by the FAA, um, you know, the pardon upon the sky's the limit, uh, to see how broadcasters are going to be able to and be allowed to use uh, drones for um, everything in broadcast from news gathering to shooting commercials to shooting uh, well in my line of work I'm very curious to see how uh, sports production is going to use uh, drones in the in the next couple of years so time will tell so um, that's uh, that's it I have for um, the FAA and uh, NAB. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break as I always do. When I come back, I'm going to talk about two uh, big product announcements. If you follow uh, drone technology, you probably already know what I'm going to talk about. So um, I'll see you in just a second. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. And by Soho Mail, professional low-cost email with business class features and security. Welcome back. Well, um, while I was away, there were two, not one, but two uh, very exciting product announcements for new, uh, new drones out there. Um, the first one is, uh, both of them uh, in kind of the similar class. The first one is by uh, DJI, who makes probably the most popular drone, the, uh, the Phantom uh, line. Um, they have now introduced the Phantom 3. Uh, the Phantom 3 uh, comes with, uh, there's two uh, modes for it, what they call advanced and professional. Uh, they, it comes with, with their own uh, camera system and gimbal system. Uh, advanced retails for about $9.99 and features a 1080p camera, 12 megapixel uh, still uh, camera. Uh, the professional uh, model is about $12.59 and that includes a, a full 4K quality uh, camera. Um, some of the other features uh, of uh, the Phantom 3 is that it's all controlled. Uh, you have a, uh, as kind of like your viewfinder, you have a, uh, it's tablet or phone uh, controlled. Um, it, it uses what uh, their proprietary light bridge uh, transmission uh, format that will be actually be able to uh, stream back a live 720p image uh, back to your controller and tablet uh, for beautiful uh, clarity uh, in your in your videos. Um, some of the other features it has, uh, which is uh, new for uh, for the Phantom, uh, it's it's always had uh, GPS control, but that doesn't help you indoors. Well, now they have uh, features that will help you indoors. They have uh, now outfitted the bottom with uh, camera and sonar sensors that uh, basically can sense the, uh, the floor, the ground uh, beneath it and help you with uh, being able to actually have very good uh, flight control characteristics indoors without GPS. That's, uh, that's, I'm very curious to see that feature. Uh, even though I just upgraded myself to the 1.5, uh, I'm very tempted with the Phantom 3. It, um, and if I get them, I'll have to call them Humpty 2. 
uh, but uh, I'm, I'm very tempted because it's, uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, new control modes and um, a couple of things that it doesn't do. It doesn't have like an auto follow, um, but uh, there is a third party software out there that can do auto follow and they're upgrading that to work with the Phantom. So that is due out May 15th. Uh, you can actually pre-order it right now on Amazon. Uh, May 15th is its official launch date, so that's very, very soon. So um, uh, looking forward to uh, the reviews on that one, and it looks, uh, so far the reviews look like phenomenal. Now, um, a competitor of DJI is uh, 3D Robotics. Uh, 3D Robotics, another company uh, that uh, has uh, produced a couple drones, they now have uh, one that is basically going to compete head-to-head -head with the Phantom uh, series. Uh, it's called the 3DR Solo. Uh, it retails, it's a little more, it's, it's $9.99, but it doesn't include, for $9.99 you don't get a, a camera gimbal. Uh, you have to cough up a couple more hundred dollars for a camera gimbal, about, uh, it would make it about $14.99. And that is to mount a GoPro. Uh, it doesn't have its own camera. So if you already have a GoPro, great. If you don't have a GoPro, well, add about another four or $500 uh, to that price still. So. In terms of price, it's a little more than the Phantom, but uh, some of its uh, features uh, are very promising and, and look phenomenal. Um, uh, one of the things it has is that it can directly control, it's, it's the first drone that can directly interface with the GoPro. Uh, where you could, uh, through its software interface, which is again through a, a tablet or phone, uh, you can um, set your camera modes. You can start and stop recording uh, and, and do everything that you can with the GoPro app. You can do built with its uh, built-in app to your GoPro. Uh, that, that's an advantage. Uh, you don't have to start it while it's on the ground and, and then have no control over it and just, just let it shoot. You can control everything uh, from the tablet app. Um, another thing it has, it has a couple of follow modes that are very promising. They have what's called a, a cable mode, uh, where you can actually set a flight path between point A and point B, and it will autonomously follow that path as if it's on an invisible wire. Uh, that will allow you to um, free yourself from uh, flying it and control the camera. So you can do some wonderful videography uh, uh, shots with this. Uh, it has a, it, 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 it's, it's a, gonna be a, a really cool feature to be able to do that. Uh, there's also a follow around mode uh, where it'll kind of uh, make a circular path around, uh, a, around a subject. And again, you can then control, you're, you're free to just control the camera. Um, that's, that's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, it looks like it's a, it's a very sophisticated uh, drone in, in some ways maybe more so than the phantom and uh it could uh, could prove to take a, a dent out of the uh the phantom uh it's just it's a little more um a little more pricey but uh, again probably if you're really really serious into videography or or if you already have a gopro camera uh this this one would be very good to consider okay one more thing i have for you is uh as i i do from time to time showing uh uh, showing uh, videos of uh, some uh, drones, either either in good ways or uh, some uh, catastrophes. Uh, well, um, uh, I've often shown videos with featuring animals, and as I've determined, animals really don't like drones. Uh, here's yet another example of uh, Animal One Drone Zero. Uh, this was uh, this is a video that's kind of gone a little viral out there it's a chimpanzee and uh, he uh, is, is uh, uh, video uh, videoing the chimpanzees with the, the drone and gets a little too close to one of them and as you see uh, something that kind of reminds me out of uh, how Planet of the Apes probably will start uh, the chimpanzee kind of takes matters into his own hands and knocks the drone right out of the sky so uh, again uh, another uh, another case in point of uh, animals and drones do not like each other. So, uh, so that's that's all I have for you for this episode. Um, I'm glad to be back to doing it. And as always, you can contact me uh, either on Twitter at drone guy Tom, or you can send me an email at drone guy at tebweb.com, T-E-B-W-E-B.com. 
And as always, uh, you can uh, everything that I talk about here and on every episode, I will provide all the links to what I talk about and some of my own thoughts and musings that I, I don't talk about, I didn't talk about on the show, uh, on my Medium uh, account. Uh, you see the address there on the screen. Uh, though to find out more uh, info and the direct links to everything that I featured on here. And uh, one more uh, thing is uh, we're also uh, part of the uh, Patreon uh, community. Um, if you like the show and you like uh, you like a lot of the, the, the podcast and info that we provide here on the phillytech.org netcast network, uh, we could use your, uh, your help, your financial support, as I like to say, to help us keep the server fans uh, buzzing. So uh, anything you can give um, to, uh, to help us uh, keep it going uh, would be very much appreciated. And uh, thank you very much. That's all I have for this, uh, this episode. So like I said, glad to be back, and I'll see you next time.